In 10th grade from Yambu International School. Today in this section we will talk verify the trigonometric ideas we've been talking about. Now we talked about difference between the expression and equation before. Now I'd like to revisit the, that a little bit because I want to concentrate on this such as expression would basically some, be something that looks like this. Okay, equations have a first condition that basically says that 3x minus 2 is equal to 7 or sine of x is equal to 1. Okay, the second part of the equation is that it has identities is that this could be written as this, which is equal to this, or tangent of x, cotangent of x would be equal to 1. Okay, so these are some, these are the difference between identities and, um, sorry, expression and equations, and in equation, two parts can come in that there is condition and identities okay so let's go ahead and solve one example where we find the identity of an equation because what I I know most of the people know the difference between expression and uh, equation but again most of the people some people don't so just have to make clear for them as well for example if we have tangent of x multiply with cotangent of x that would yield 1 okay now what you want to do is basically this RHS is equal to LHS if you know this it basically means the right hand side should be equal to left hand side so whatever this product is should be equal to 1 because the left hand side is equal to 1 and because you can know this by it's equal to so we know that tangent of x can be written as sine of x multiplied by, oops, sorry, uh, it's divided by cosine of x and cotangent of x would be written as cosine of x over sine of x, right? So this all would be equal to 1. Now you basically open up the parenthesis, sine of x over cosine of x multiplied by cosine of x over sine of x this would go out with this, this would go out with this leaving you 1 on this side and you already have 1 on this side so 1 is equal to 1 happy day, everything goes up and yep, situation is in hand Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about our next example and this section is after we talked about the identities okay so if you don't know where the sine over cosine came from because of tangent well you need to go learn the, the uh, learn the section which previous of this one 2 minus secant square x is equal to 1 minus tangent squared x okay now this is basically what we know as Pythagorean identities, which I basically write as PI, Pythagorean identities. Okay, now this would basically be secant squared. So if you bring this over here, basically be now we do since we are making this equal secant squared x would also be equal to tangent squared x plus one would be secant squared x. Okay, and then you have this over here as well. Now you take this parenthesis off. Okay, now you basically have um, uh, 2 minus this. So if you plug in this one over here, that would be, be 1 right here because it's minus and then you have tangent squared x which is basically equal to 1 
and then this tangent. Yep, tangent squared x. So there we have equivalent identities. Or you can just say, or you can do this by another method, the method which is preferable by me. Okay, so that would be what I want you to do is basically recall the identity where we said that tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. This is what I want you to recall. <clears throat> so what I want you to do is right here is that over here we can do 1 minus secant squared x is equal to 1 minus secant squared x because you have minus 10 squared x plus 1 over here okay here you have plus 1 so you can wait now since you have this you can you put minus secant squared x okay which is equal to 1 minus 10 tangent squared x now this is positive right so we can basically say it's equal to secant minus secant squared x okay 2 minus secant squared x is equal to minus secant squared x and 2 would cancel out from right here to make it balanced I hope you're getting this because if you aren't, we are going to solve another example so in which you'll get it. Okay, so let's say you have secant of secant theta minus 1 over 1 minus cosine theta is equal to secant theta. Well, that basically would leave out as 1 minus cosine theta would be equal as... We come across to this example saying that secant theta minus 1 over 1 minus cosine theta is equal to secant uh, theta. So we can replace this 1 minus cosine theta with something like this, which you learned in trigonometric identity. So then, which basically means that you have secant theta over here. This would cancel out with this one, okay? Now that would basically means that secant theta over 1 is equal to secant theta. But well, secant theta over 1 is basically secant theta, okay? So you can prove this right here which is an equation right here. Let's go ahead and talk about the second one. The second one would be one plus sine y, one plus sine of negative y, Okay, basically we equal to cosine squared y. Okay, so 1 plus sine y would basically be equal to, let's put minus over here, so 1 minus sine y is equal to cosine squared y. Right? So 1 plus cosine y and 1 minus cosine y multiply this together you would basically get 1 minus sine squared y which is equal to cosine squared y okay 1 minus sine squared y would be equal to sine squared y plus cosine cosine squared y minus sine squared y is equal to cosine squared y minus plus cancels out leaving me cosine squared y is equal to cosine squared y okay so let's go ahead and solve another example we found out the answer right here again it's just something that you need to keep an eye on if what you are given 
LHS is equal to RHS or RHS should be equal to LHS you should always remember that basically means that right hand side is equal to left hand side so 2 secant squared x minus 2 secant squared x times sine of squared x minus sine squared x minus cosine squared uh, cosine x is equal to 1. Oof, that's a long one. So we can multiply this term together and take out this one, this guy over here. Okay? Then we can multiply all this by that. Okay, so it would be, we said 2, 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, would be equal to that. And then what we'll do is basically you have 2 secant squared x multiplied by, we can turn this into cosine squared x, right? Is equal to 1. Whoops, minus 1 is equal to 1. Then you would basically convert this into 2 secant squared x is e times 1 over secant squared x because cosine squared x can be written as 1 over secant squared x, right? And then you have minus 1 which is equal to 1 so this would cancel that with this one you would basically have 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 and yep, 1 is equal to 1 so pre prove that this equation over here is correct okay, now I hope you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like for this much um, and thank you for watching enjoy this video and what I want you to do is there's a URL of Facebook page down below in the description area give it a like to that page and make your friends like that page as well please it really helps me out a lot thank you for watching again peace out